All right, everybody. Welcome in. Obviously, we've gotten players already. We'll open with a statement from Coach Huff, and then we'll go to questions. Please raise your hand. I know the setup's a little different today. Please raise your hand, and I'll get the mic to you, okay? Thank you. Uh, how's everybody doing? Appreciate everybody being here. Apologize for uh, being behind. We had a Title IX um, university-wide training that we had to go to um, this morning. Um, Interesting week for Marshall uh, Athletics. Um, let me address the situation at hand first um, in all sincerity. Um, I want to apologize for my remarks being uh, misinterpreted. Um, last week, um, I was asked a question by a reporter, um, and I inserted opinion over facts um, about a situation. Um, which ultimately uh, created a little bit of a sandstorm. Um, it was truly based on my opinion of a small minority of fans, and I actually generalized an entire fan base, um, and that was wrong. I take full responsibility for that. That was not my intent. My conversation was more in a general term that was obviously implied but not um, or misinterpreted is probably a better way to say it. And I apologize to anyone that I offended. Um, I was not speaking of the overwhelming majority of fans who do support, who do donate, who do cheer, who do get frustrated when we don't win, but also encourage our players also um, continue to support in a positive manner. Um, I was speaking more out of frustration towards a small minority of fans, same group of fans that Owen Porter addressed after the game. Um, I love those fans too, um, but it's difficult for me um, to see them um, attack our players. Um, I've, I've got to be more mature than that and focus more on the majority of fans that do support, do cheer. Um, but but it, it, it does, it, it frustrates me, not because the people don't care, not because um, people don't get upset, but because these kids work way too hard um, to get booed. They work way too hard to be disrespected. They work way too hard for derogatory comments. Criticism is part of the game. I fully understand that. They do it every day on ESPN for hours and hours and hours. Um, kid, player, coach doesn't catch a ball. Come on, you got to catch that ball. We need that catch. Um, you know, he doesn't catch well because he's dropped three. That's that's great. But when you start talking about death threats and family threats and racial slurs and those type of things, I struggle. I struggle with that. And I know it's a very, very small minority. And um, I apologize to the majority of fans who do actually support, even when we don't play well, even when we don't execute, even when we don't win games that we should win, all of those things. So um, I take full responsibility for the comment. I take full responsibility for the misinterpretation. I take full responsibility for anyone I offended, and I apologize. I really do. Um, secondly, I never intended, never stated um, that Cam Fancher said any of those things. That's not what I was trying to say. Cam Fancher did not say he hates the fans. Cam Fancher did not say he left because of the fans. It was my personal opinion over what I was seeing, hearing, reading for an entire year. That, that's all it was. Cam Fancher has done nothing but show up every day, bust his tail, play injured, play hurt, battle his way through, play well, improve the whole nine. And I hope, just like the locker room, I had the same conversation with the team on Monday when we got back. Um, I hope the locker room and Cam knows that the only thing I've done this year is support them wholeheartedly. Um, and I think, I think they know that. Uh, we had a couple players come up and say, Coach, appreciate you for doing that. We know your heart is. But, again, I, I stand in a much greater light. I stand in a much greater position. I've got to be more uh, wise and choiceful with my words because they do carry a lot of weight. Um, so with that, I, I take full responsibility for the comments. I apologize to those I may have offended. Um, hopefully the majority of the fans know me um, and know that my commitment not only to this university but this community um, goes deeper than one frustrated conversation. Um, uh, so you can boo me one extra time um, this weekend uh, or when, when you guys get a chance. So, um, But honestly, I, I do. Um, there's way too many – 
people that do it the right way. I mean, I could name a thousand of them, but there's way too many fans who drive to every game, support every game. Do they get frustrated? Yes, I get that. That's, that's part of life. Um, but do they stay positive? Do they encourage our kids? Do they love our kids? Yes, they do. Um, so with that, again, I take full responsibility. It's nobody else's fault. It's nobody else's problem. It's mine. I take responsibility for it, and hopefully everyone understands that I'm, uh, I apologize for that. Um, Obviously, great opportunity coming up in the bowl game. Um, really good first few weeks of practice. So the way we did it, um, the first two weekends or the first six practices go towards uh, development, uh, which are the younger guys who may have redshirted or played limited reps. They got a lot of practice reps in those first six. And then we started this week um, kind of flipping the script to um, UTSA and their schemes with, their, with, with our guys. So um, the players came back really excited. Um, the players came back. Um, actually really energized. It was kind of our first bye week since um, probably, the, yeah, the flood or the, the camp season. Um, so it was good. Owen Porter told me, he was like, I didn't know what it felt like not to hurt when you got out of bed uh, for the last couple of weeks. But um, really, really excited about that. Obviously, a lot of positive going on um, in the midst of my uh, idiotic um, statements. Um, Jaden Harrison being in two-time or two-list All-American is probably a better way to say it. Um, you know, first time since Randy Moss has been here that that's happened, um, that, you know, Jaden Harrison, really proud of that young man. You talk about a young man that, you know, was in our first recruiting class and has came in and developed. I still remember the very first touchdown he called against Western Kentucky um, two years ago, was that? Yeah, two years ago. Um, and then to see him, I mean, he's changed his body. Um, he's vegan now. He's lost 15 pounds. Um, he's really committed to improving um, his leadership. He's always got a smile on his face. Um, so really, really happy for him to be able to add his name to the list of greats um, um, on that All-American list. Obviously, we, before, last time we talked, the list hadn't came out, but all conference players as well. Um, I think we had, you know, a bunch on first team, second team, and third team. Um, I think, again, anytime you have team success, you get individual recognition. Um, and although the number of wins may have not been where we wanted them or expected them to be, um, I am glad that our guys got recognized for their, um, their individual talents and individual um, performances. Um, graduation, we had a bunch of players graduate last Saturday, I think it was, yeah. Um, a bunch of guys, I mean, you get the chance to see those guys come by with their parents and they got caps and gowns on and moms and families are crying because they remember, you know, when they started playing football at five years old and now they're walking across the stage with an unbelievable degree. Um, that's what I do this for. Um, I know I get paid to win and I want to win and we will win. I get that. But having a mom bring a kid in and mom being in tears because her son graduated because of the game of football, because of Marshall University, because of all the resources that we've put around these young men um, is something special. I think that's something that probably gets taken for granted um, a little bit now, you know, kind of, oh, you graduated. Uh, but that, that's a huge, that's a huge step in life. Um, and we had a bunch of guys that, that did that this past weekend. So congratulations to them. Um, Made a few new hires. I'm still in the process of finalizing some, just so everybody knows. We can't announce anything until the HR process goes through, the background goes through. We, I know we want to, and trust me, I, I'm, I want to be able to let you guys know as much as possible, but there are some processes that go through, and the people, it's outside of Marshall, so we have to send some of these things off for background checks, and trust me, where we send them to, they could care less about how fast we want them back. Um, if anybody's been through that process, you know. So, But we were able to hire um, Seth Dagey um, as a new offensive coordinator and quarterback coach. Um, obviously, Seth has played the game at a really high level. He played for uh, Coach Mike Leach, last, coordinate, last quarterback to play for Coach Mike Leach at Texas Tech that has not become a coordinator yet. That's kind of the, the trend. All of his quarterbacks um, have transitioned into coordinator roles. Um, he was the last one. He was the tight end coach um, at Purdue prior to here. He's had stops at Ole Miss where kind of some of the stuff that we do kind of cross with Coach Kiffin's um, system, kind of the former Alabama system. Um, he's also been at USC with Graham Harrell. Um, I was at an event in Vegas um, this past weekend for the National Football Foundation um, awards dinner, and I ran into Coach Brown from uh, West Virginia, um, and he's had some um, 
history with Coach Daigie, and obviously had a lot of really good things to say about him. So real excited to have him on board. Um, he will not be coaching anything in the bowl game. Actually, he's only been to practice like twice. He is hell-bent uh, spent right now on recruiting. Um, so he's only been out there like twice, but everything else he's been recruiting, transfer portal, trying to get to know the, the high school guys that we have committed um, on the phone with different um, transfer guys. Obviously, this period that we're in right now, we're doing official visits. It's kind of like speed dating. One kid come in, one kid go out, one kid come in, one kid go out. So um, he will not have any responsibilities at the bowl game. He will be at the bowl game because I want him to get around the players as much as possible. Um, but he won't have any coaching responsibilities um, on game day. Um, and then, obviously, um, UTSA, really good football team. Um, a lot of respect for what Coach Trailer has been able to do over the last couple of years. Um, there, their quarterback is phenomenal. I think he's on his sixth or seventh year, uh, which is awesome. Um, and you can tell by his experience, you can tell by his confidence, you can tell by his poise um, that he's you know been playing the game seven years. Um, he is he is going to be a problem for us. We're going to have to do a really good job of containing him and managing the different looks they give you. Um, on the defensive side, they're big. This will probably be the biggest defensive line we played across the board since Georgia Southern, and they're bigger than Georgia Southern. Um, because of that, their linebackers do a really good job of making a lot of plays because O-linemen get stuck on the D-line. And then in the back end, because of the linebacker's ability to flow freely, the back end is put in advantageous cover position. So um, really excited, really excited to get to Frisco. I um, want to say thanks to the Scooters Bowl committee. Uh, for selecting us. Um, we will leave to go down to um, Frisco on Friday. So we will practice all this week. We will travel Friday. We will practice at the bowl site um, a couple of days, and then we'll play the game and we'll come back. So obviously signing day is immediately after um, the game, so we got to kind of get right back to work. So um, guys are excited. Um, have had a lot of positive feedback from – um, some of the changes we've made, not only schematically, but, um, you know, personnel-wise. Um, actually, um, Ethan Driscoll met Coach Daigie, and he reminded me, he said, you know I got another year, right? So I guess he was not on the team in the COVID year or in 2018, um, some way, somehow. Um, I said, stop playing with my emotions because uh, right now is not the time to um, emotionally um, play with Coach Huff. But um, I think just from that meeting, how much energy Coach Daigie's got, how much confidence he's got, um, we're, we're going to have a lot of fun playing football in, in, in the system. So um, really looking forward to that. And with that, I'll open up with questions. Coach, in, in regard to the, to the portal and, and the new landscape of college football, how hard is it for you? How hard is it for fan bases to get fired up about a bowl and then some players decide to play, some hit the portal? It's it's a different reality, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's different. You know, um, we, we, you adapt or you die. You know, it's it's different, and and everybody has different reasons. And and that was my um, that was my concern. Why I was disappointed in myself for the comments about Cam. It had nothing to do with my opinion. Uh, everybody's got different reasons. Um, some we talked, you know, at the banquet about some walk-ons just financially have to make a decision. Um, some guys have to make an eligibility decision. Hey, I'm behind the guy, a two-year start or whatever it is. Some guys have to make a scheme decision. Hey, the scheme is this or that. Um, and then some guys you know, are dealing with things that you know, the fans and myself won't even know about, family issues or whatever it may be. So um, obviously it's, 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 um, it's like losing a child. You know, I know when these guys come in and a lot of them, there's, there's been zero like disgruntled coach, I hate it here. I hate you. Like I don't like you know the food. Like none of those, none of the guys have said that. They've all had valid reasons. Um, it makes it difficult because although you're trying to finish the season, um, guys are put in a time crunch by the NCAA um, recruiting calendar because um, signing day is next week and you can sign portal guys. So guys got to make decisions about going on visits. Guys got to make decisions about. Um, you know, do I sign? Do I wait until, you know, later in the year to sign? Um, most people, most players want to try and get to their new school so they can participate in winter conditioning and spring ball and those type of things. Um, so it makes it very difficult. Um, but it's a national problem. I think obviously we see it because, you know, we all love Marshall. But 
um, it's a national problem. It's all it's all over. You know, um, we have not had anyone um, opt out of the bowl game. I think that speaks to our culture. Um, all of our guys are planning to play. Um, all of our guys have been committed to going down and winning the game. Um, I think that speaks to our culture. I think it speaks to the grit and the grind that our players have. We want to play another game. Um, obviously, there are reasons for guys to sit out of bowl games, you know, whatever that may be. But um, all of our guys are fired up. All of our guys are excited about playing. Just to build off that, what's the challenge for you as a coach? The team that you might see on film might not be the team that's the representation of what you get at the, at the bowl game. So what's the challenge for you is to try to prepare for those the opponents? Yeah, it makes it tough because you don't know, you know, exactly um, player-wise, you know, uh, what you're going to be running into. Um, but you can kind of predict scheme and structure that's just going to be similar. Um, it makes it a little bit more difficult. In season, you can kind of play the – um, the personnel game, right? I can put my fast guy on their slow guy. Or I can try to put my you know, big guy on their little guy. You can't really do that in bowl games as much, um, especially at our level. You know, the, the, the guys in the, the college football playoff, they know. <laughs> they know exactly who's going to show up. Um, but our guys, it's a little bit different because it is so, it's, it's so transient. Um, but for, for us, we just try to focus on the structure and, and try to focus on getting our guys – to do what we do really well, you know, based on their, their structure. Obviously, when you get out there, you'll see, you know, maybe they have a guy in, maybe they don't have a guy in. But for, for us, it's more focusing on the structure. They play this defense. They run these plays on offense, these formations. Okay, now let's play those plays rather than playing the players, if that makes sense. Coach, you got some uh, standouts. This is going to be it for them. And, you know, we got like Owen Porter. And just how, how important is it, you know, as you are in this, you know, recruiting period to you can point to a guy like that who has stayed uh, the whole duration of his career. And then and, and just also follow up on just some of these guys. And it's their final time, your final time coaching them and help have they have helped build the base here for you. Yeah, um, we, 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 are, we are looking at some dinosaurs um, and I think Owen Porter is one of those guys. I think Logan Osborne is one of those guys. And when I say dinosaurs, guys who committed to a school, stayed the entire time, started their career in the same helmet, and going to end the career in their same helmet. And that is just something that we won't see for a while. Not, not, not never, but the, with the transfer portal and, and the way things are going, it's, 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 it's interesting to see how many guys you recruit that you retain, and that's part of, you know, part of the struggle that I'm trying to make sure we do a really good job of. You recruit really good players, you got to retain them, you know, or you're going to have to go to the portal and get 15, 20 guys every year, which is not sustainable. Um, so having guys like Porter to point to, having guys like Logan Osborne to point to as, hey, this is what Marshall University and this community can do for you if you stay. Um, this is how it will allow you to grow if you stay. I told you know, Logan Osborne, I said, you're, you're going to be on the board of directors in 20 years. Like, you, you, this place loves you. And, you know, this place, um, you know, not only is it home, but it is a place that you've made an impact on. And, and those kind of guys are probably more few and far between across the country than they were five years ago, not even 10 years ago, if that makes sense. Coach, the last couple of games of the regular season, uh, Pennington got some starts, Fancher got a start. Um, I know there was a lot of misunderstanding with why Fancher left, but could he have seen Pennington coming and uh, just decided that he didn't have any more playing time next year, or did he I don't know insinuate that. any of that with you no, in a meeting? No. Okay. This is how I do the transfer report. That's a good question. This is how I, I don't want to insert opinion because it will run like a fire, um, but good question. This is how I do transfer report. I tell the guys you got two things, okay? When you go in the transfer portal, you got to come in and look me in the eye like a man and have a conversation about separating because I think that helps them in their life. You make a decision. You come in. You have a conversation with your superior. You come in and have a conversation with your boss. Whatever it is, you come in and have a conversation with your coworkers and say, hey, coach, this is the decision I'm coming up with, and I don't ask them why. I don't ask them why. This is the decision I'm coming up with. This thing this is best for my family. The only question I ask them is, is there anything that I can do, we can do, to keep you? If they say, no, coach, it's not. It's bigger than that, okay. Wish you well. Let me know if I can help you. Because what I don't want is I don't want the fear of guys coming in and me trying to talk them in or out of the portal. It's almost like you're trying to talk someone in or out of marriage. 
you know, if, if I got to talk you in and out of it, then are you really committed? I just tell them as a step in manhood, you got to be able to have a conversation with people in charge or people responsible for you and tell them, look them in the eye. Thank you. Hey, thank you for your time here. I appreciate everything you did. I'd love for you to stay. If there's anything I can do to get you to stay, let me know. So that was the conversation. Um, I don't have an answer on, you know, the whys. I try not to do that because I don't want kids coming in feeling like their reason why is enough or not enough because there's some personal things that are always, I'm not just talking with Cam, but just in general, I've had kids come in and really have some personal dialogue that I'm like, you're right, you probably have to go. So I try not to put young men in that spot. Be a man, walk in, have the conversation, shake my hand, look me in the eye, give me a hug, you're out of here. Obviously, I wasn't able to do that with Cam because I wasn't in town. We had a phone conversation. We did have a conversation in person a couple weeks before then, but it wasn't necessarily about leaving. It was just about um, – actually, it was about Coach Daigie and what we were planning to do is before we hired him. Um, I was out of town when Cam made his decision, so we did have a phone conversation. He called me, uh, was very respectful, um, did not give a – I hate it here. I hate the fans. I hate none of that. It was very professional, Coach. This is what me and my family think is best for me. Awesome, man. I hope you go rip it up. You know. Um, you know, obviously, when you, when you look at bowl week, looks a little bit different than leading up to a traditional game week. Last year, the message was be where your feet are. How important is that to to for these? guys to enjoy the time there but also realize that at the end of the day it is a business trip yeah um you know we've kind of that's kind of our you know our motto you know be where your feet are you know one of the things we're talking about this this week is win the game in Huntington you know so we got to do all the work we need to do from a film study from a really good practice reps because obviously when we get down there things are kind of you know you, they're minimized right your meetings are a little bit shorter because of bowl events and timing your practices are a little bit shorter so we're talking about win the game in Huntington so we're taking this week as an approach of this is the game week where I told them the game is Saturday so treat it just like we're going to play Saturday. That way, from a routine standpoint of watching film, going through down to this, a situation tendencies, reviewing things, mentally they're getting in that mode. Then what we want to do when we get to Frisco is we want to be in recall mode. So when we get to practice, we're just recalling what we've done all last week, if that makes sense. I still want the guys to enjoy the bowl game. Like, that's the part of going to the bowl. You should have fun. Um, but I want them to also understand that Marshall has the highest bowl win percentage in the country in the top five. Um, so when we go, the expectation is to win. Um, and we've got to do our part to uphold that um, as we, you know, head to, head to Frisco. Ali commits the East-West Shrine game. How happy are you for him doing that? Yeah, that's really good, man. I think, you know, those type of um, games are, are national attention, you know, that, that you're getting nationally recognized. Um, I, I think, again, um, I hope um, the, this community of fans realize that we've, we've seen a generational talent come through. You know, I mean, I hope we get another Ali next year. Um, but, you know, guys like that and Randy and Chad, those, those guys are generational talents. And we've been blessed enough for two years to, to, to see it, you know, full speed, live every single weekend. Um, and I'm really excited for him to be able to have that opportunity to go show his skills on the national scene. Um, those bowl games, I think Tucker got the Hula Bowl invitation um, as, as well. You know, those type of bowl games um, – with the recon recognition of the talent that's going to be there for us to have Marshall being represented in those games, um, really pleased with the guys who got us the recognition, really pleased with the teammates that helped those guys get the recognition as well. Coach, I can't uh, do the math in my head right now, but I'm trying to think of your age when Chad would have thrown the pass to uh, Randy Moss in a bowl game, and now you're going to coach his son uh, in a bowl game. That's kind of cool. I would have been oh, okay, well, here, Grant's five, kind of six. <laughs> I would have been six. How, how would I have been? What year was it? 97. I was born in – I was 14 years old. I was probably on a dirt road somewhere um, – headed to a river to go fishing, no shoes on, and a fishing rod that I made, probably 14. Um, I hadn't got to the driving the car part legally, but I had gotten to the uh, walk away, kind of go hang out at the river. Um, so I was 14 years old. I was, that would be high school? Yeah. 10th grade? Freshman? I was probably treated, I, I acted like a 10th grader. I'm, I'm usually act a little older than I am. But, yeah, freshman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 14 years old. Now that, hopefully we get to see, how many did he throw? I was talking about the big, uh, the big, the big pass. 
Yeah, how many touchdowns did, did Chad uh, throw in that game? I can't remember. I hope Cole triples it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, where is Steve? Yeah, he's missing on a On a bus to Toledo right now. Yeah, I hope I hope Cole triples whatever that uh, that touchdown record was in that in that game. But no, it obviously um, I'm really I was excited about Cole and his progress. Um, excited about just being a part of such a legacy. You know, I think sometimes you get we, me, you get so entrenched in the next game, the next game, next game that you really don't take a chance to take a deep breath and realize this legacy that Marshall has. And, and for me to get to be a part of it and lead this program um, is probably uh, more humbling than than sometimes I may may show. Um, but it, it truly is. I mean, you think of the history of not only just the names we know. But the guys that you meet, you know, Coach Luke Sammons over at Cabell Midland, and I've had a bunch of conversations because of Owen and, and Rouse, and we've got a young man committed over there as well. Um, it's just it's, – it's special. It really is. And sometimes I apologize if I don't always spew that humble – or the humility of it. But every once in a while when I'm driving into 530, I, I, I take a deep breath as I make the turn on third and say, wow, this is, this is special. Yeah, I really do. Um, you've talked a little bit about the – the signing day coming up. How do you balance recruiting and bowl prep? Well, then they stick this press conference right in the middle of all of it, so it really throws a curveball in it. Um, no, I, it, it's 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 a it's a challenge. It, it really is because again, recruiting has changed, right? So you know, when Keith was getting recruited, and we won't talk about your recruiting process, yeah. Um, but when, when it used to be, you know, you'd recruit a kid all year. You get to this point in the season, you go sit down with his family, you go have dinner, you talk to him, you really get to understand who these young men are. You really get to understand who his community um, connections are. You get to his high school, and they wouldn't sign until February. Well, now everything is so sped up, like you're getting kids in here for hours. It's not even days. We had one kid come in um, yesterday, got here at 8 a.m., and he left at 6 p.m., you know, and we got to try to figure out how do we sell Huntington Marshall, our coaching staff, our football program in that short amount of time um, because he's going to turn around and go to another school <laughs> tomorrow. You know what I mean? So it, it really it's, – it's a balancing act. Um, I think, again, the staff does a really good job. Um, I know when I first got here and we added so many other pieces to the organization, it was kind of different. Um, and, and But that's why. You know, we've got a recruiting staff that's really got to manage all that while we step off and go – uh, watch film on UTSA to get ready for practice. And then we got to come back and have a meeting with the kid and his parents. And then uh, we got to go to dinner with them. And, you know, so there's so many moving parts that obviously the resources that we do have help kind of manage all of that so that when these kids come, they feel like, hey, I didn't get the shorthand because they had practice. I got all the attention I needed. I got to see academics. I got to see the town. I got to see um, the training room, all of those things. So that way they leave here with the best impression possible to hopefully return. Any Good. further questions for Coach? Chad, with three touchdowns, 367. Oh, man, six <laughs> touchdowns and 600 yards. Man, you guys think I'm Nuke Rockney. All right. All right. Well, I appreciate you guys. Uh, look forward to seeing all you guys down at Frisco. Thank you guys for everything you do. Uh, go hurt.